other Saturday on Channel 34, live. With your host, Haitian artist activist Smith George. now where the re-emergence of former dictator Jean-Claude Duvalier remains mysterious but his intentions they're becoming more clear he could become involved in Haiti's political scene as to his conversations with the judge and allegations of corruption his lawyers and asked what happened in the courtroom Tuesday he told him that uh, he stole money from the, the country and he used that money for personal purposes uh, things like that. And uh, let me tell you, there is a statute of limitation on, on all those charges. The statute of limitation is 10 years. And w after 10 years, there is nothing you can do about that. Even that they were true, what they say. And, and you even, you said that they also asked you, well, well, first of all, he is free, you told me, to come and go and to leave this country if he so chooses. All right. What is his intention? Does he plan to leave or stay? He plans to stay in this country. He will stay to answer these accusations? Yes. We will confront the justice system. And where is he going to live? He has his house here. So you're preparing his house for him to move back into? He is going to move back to his house. You were also telling me just now that the judge asked if he planned on getting into politics if he stayed? Yes, the judge asked him that. And I answered. I told the judge he is a citizen of Haiti, he has the right to do politics in his country. And as a matter of fact, he will do politics in his country, that is right. And I'm one of the best person that can tell you that because I am the one of the 60 people who wrote the Asian constitution. Now, just to put this into context for you, when Duvalier was ousted from power back in 1986, he's alleged to have plundered hundreds of millions of dollars from the country. <laughs> comme un playboy porté sur les jolies filles et les belles motos. Ici, vous le voyez essayant une de ses nouvelles acquisitions sur la pelouse du Palais National, derrière une véritable haie de garde du corps, et ne s'intéressant du même coup que de très loin aux affaires du pays. On peut se poser... Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Michelle is with us from Haiti. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much. What has been the public response to the fact that he has returned? Are people outraged? Do people remember his, his tenure as a period of mass murder? What is the public response? Well, I think uh, the public response is uh, very different from uh, one, one uh, uh, end of the spectrum to the next. I mean, there are a number of young people who uh, really were, uh, uh, I would say, uh, read into impunity. They are used to the fact that the justice is never brought to anyone in Haiti. Uh, so, uh, and a lot of them, those young people, don't even have the memory of what happened uh, under Francois Duvalier and under Jean-Claude Duvalier. And, uh, but a number of voices were raised today in the media, you know, from former political prisoners, from people who really suffered from the regime and who actually uh, could uh, recall uh, the instances of torture 
and uh, uh, we have, I have personally a very, uh, very fond memory of a friend of mine, a journalist at Radio Haiti, who was uh, uh, tortured uh, on November 28, 1980, when they thought uh, they could actually uh, shut us down. And uh, uh, he was killed two years later when he tried to come back to his country and he was killed by the same political police. All the uh, action brought uh, uh, against him in different courts but abroad. Uh, that's how, uh, you know, a number of uh, uh, accounts were seized abroad uh, because the Haitian government uh, actually uh, went ahead and pressed uh, charges against him but in foreign uh, uh, courts where he actually uh, had uh, uh, wealth. Uh, nothing was ever introduced in Haiti against him, which explains that he could come today, he could come yesterday, and not actually be uh, arrested. And uh, we do expect that uh, uh, some uh, former political prisoners and uh, uh, people like myself will actually repress charges in the next few days. Surrounded by police, by SWAT teams from the Haitian police, he was escorted down the three flights of stairs where he once into a police van, a white police van that was sitting out front and had been for well over an hour as this whole drama unfolded here at the hotel. He was taken then into custody. into a police van, a white police van that was sitting out front and had been for well over an hour as this whole drama unfolded. In Port-au-Prince, just moments ago, from his hotel balcony, former dictator Jean-Claude Duvalier, known as Baby Doc, has just been taken into police custody. It comes less than two days after he mysteriously returned to the country after some 25 years in exile. Human rights groups have long been calling for his arrest. From the moment I took the decision to return to Haiti to commemorate with you in our country this sad anniversary, I was waiting for all sorts of persecutions. But believe me, the desire to participate at your side in this national reconstruction effort is more important than all the problems I could face. The price to pay is not important. The essential thing for me was to be with you. In three decades of dictatorship, Duvalier and his father dragged Haiti into terror, poverty, and disarray. Francois Duvalier, a physician who cultivated the nickname Papa Doc, took power back in 1957, brutally ruling Haiti until his sudden death in 1971. Jean-Claude Duvalier inherited the presidency from his father at age 19 and with it the nickname Baby Doc. He continued to ravage the economy but was forced from office by unrest and a military coup in 1986. By then, more than thousand people had been killed, the country was devastated, and much of the educated class had emigrated en masse. Many people are wondering why Duvalier would risk returning now to a country where he's accused of so many crimes, and not surprisingly, the answer again could be money.